Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my channel. My name's Tuscany, and today I'm going to show you how I made this pinafore, which I would say is definitely Von Trapp family worthy. In total, I think I actually spent about $11 on this project because I found a giant tablecloth at Goodwill for about $6, which is this fabric, and I found everything else I needed at Joann's for, uh, for free. <laughs> Not for free. Uh, for like 50% off. I do want to warn you guys that I am pretty new to sewing. I've only been sewing for about a year now and I've only done a couple of projects. So just be aware of that. <laughs> I'm pretty self-taught. Uh, I was raised with some sewing knowledge, but I didn't grow up sewing. So a lot of the things that I do may seem a little strange because it's just how my brain wants to process it. So uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're super good at sewing and have been sewing for a long ass time, then uh, I recommend maybe getting some popcorn and having a few laughs. But uh, if you're a bit of a perfectionist, then, you know, be nice. So grab a cup of tea, a coffee, or a pint if you're of age, and let's get into it. So I did not use a pattern for this project. I made it up and I used my favorite skirt as a base. I knew that I liked the shape and the length of that skirt, so I laid it down on the fabric that was folded in half and spread it out. I then cut along the bottom edge of the skirt in the fabric. I then proceeded with cutting out the waist. There is an equation to figure out the measurement of the waist if the fabric is folded into quarters, which is what I tried. <laughs> and then I realized that my uh, fabric was only folded in half. So what I did is I took that equation, which is uh, your waist measurement plus two inches divided by 6.28 and then you measure that out along the side of the corner of the fabric, and then you just cut a circle with that circumference, or that radius, excuse me. <laughs> but since my fabric was only folded in half and not in quarters, I had to double that measurement, which is why you see one already cut out with the wrong width. Okay. So I have the um, skirt cut out, which is down there. Um, and with the extra fabric, I'm gonna cut out the rest of the stuff, which is just the rectangle for the top of the pinafore, the straps, the pockets, and the waistband. I know that I wanna also cut out some interfacing for the waistband. I might also decide to do some interfacing for the rectangle of the pinafore as well, just to make sure that it stays you know, in place um, and it doesn't get like wrinkly and floppy and weird. Also, we just went to the pumpkin patch and I picked up some pumpkins right there, right there. And I love them and that's all, okay. I used a piece of paper to design a pattern for the top part of the pinafore. I was really just making it up as I went and then I would try it on and see how I liked it and tweak it if I wanted something different. Once I got the pattern I liked, I then traced it onto the fabric. But I was also being kind of stupid. I used a Sharpie and don't do that. <laughs> I was honestly just being lazy. And you can see me checking to see if it went through the fabric here. But it all worked out, it doesn't show, and I definitely escaped that disaster. But I don't recommend it. Use something that you're not gonna see or use pins. Don't be like me. <laughs> Ba, 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 ba. 
Okay, so I got the front part of the pinafore all cut out. I did put darts in along the sides of my chest um, so that it forms to my body rather than kind of puckering out at the sides. I also have decided that I want to go in and add some interfacing to the back of the top part just because it is a fairly thin fabric. I want to make it a little stronger and make sure that it's not going to just kind of move around when I'm moving. Rather, it will stay in place and stay, uh, keep its shape. So next, I'm going to be going in and cutting out all the interfacing and getting those attached to the corresponding pieces, and then we can start sewing. So something a little bit different about this pinafore is that I actually wanted to make it detachable so that it could be just a skirt or the pinafore altogether. All right, so I just finished all the interfacing and got those ironed on to the fabric, but I did leave the waistband to do for last because I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting with it since I do want some uh, elastic and buttons in. I'm going to try to sew them to the interfacing before I iron it. I'm totally experimenting. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I have extra fabric. Don't really have extra interfacing though. So, we'll figure it out. Okay. So when it came to the waistband, I cut some elastic and just got that out of the way. Okay, so for the front of the waistband, what I did is I prepared the interfacing so that they were uh, the sticky parts facing out so that they would stick to the fabric and the non-sticky parts facing in towards each other. And then I just put them together. I then got them on the fabric where I want them and pinned them in place. I then measured out where I wanted the buttons to go and started sewing. For the back side of the waistband, I sewed the elastic to the interfacing. Okay, so I got all the buttons in on the waistband, and the nice thing about doing it like this is that it doesn't show on the other side, like you don't have to pin the buttons all the way through, and they're going to be pretty sturdy because they're already through a couple layers of fabric with the interfacing there. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this in just a minute. I'm going to sew in this other piece that I did over on this side and I'll sew this in over here and then I'm gonna go ahead and iron and we'll see how it goes. So once I got the waistband all ironed and the interfacing stuck inside, I then realized that I needed buttons on the back for the straps to be able to snap in. But no worries because I hadn't sewn it to the skirt yet, so I was able to open it and go in and sew those buttons in. Though they weren't as high up as the ones on the other side because there was stitching blocking it, I was able to get them in and it worked out fine. I also knew that I wanted like a flap of blah, 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 blah. I also knew that I wanted a flap of fabric to come over on the front and be buttoned in place so that it was a nice closure on the side but also brought some interest to the skirt when it was just a skirt. So I took some extra fabric and some extra interfacing and measured the width of the waistband without the seam allowance. I then applied that measurement to the flap itself. 
Once it was all ready to go, I then just sewed it onto the waistband, and then got the waistband sewed onto the skirt. It's important to map out exactly where the skirt goes onto the waistband before sewing it, so that you know exactly where you want the pleats to go. From there, I was able to sew in the zipper always making sure that it was straight and that the teeth of the zipper were constantly touching the foot of my sewing machine. Once the zipper was in, I then went back to the ironing board and figured out where I wanted the seam and ironed that down. I also ironed the bottom of the skirt, making sure I got a nice clean hem all the way around. And then I just sewed it together. I'm very close to being done with the pinafore. The skirt is right there hanging up. It's pretty much done. I just need to add pockets, which I think is going to be my next step. And then after that, I basically just have to get the top um, attached to the bottom. Well, I need to put buttons on the top so that it can attach to the bottom. But I think that's about it. Just some small details after that. So wish me luck. <laughs> For the pockets, I wanted a little bit of lace detail at the top, so I went and sewed that to the pocket before adding it to the skirt. I also wanted some lace detail at the top of the pinafore, so I did the same thing there. While I was at it, I just continued sewing the edges for the bodice. Getting the pockets exactly where I wanted took a couple of tries. I would pin them on the floor and then try on the skirt and see if I liked the position. If I didn't, I would go back and try again. Once they were perfect, I then just went in and sewed them on. Okay, so the skirt is finished. Yay! I really like how it turned out. I like the pockets. I do have a pleat right here that kind of runs through the pocket and there's nothing I can really do about that. I will consider that next time I make a skirt, but it doesn't bother me too much and I'm happy with the skirt overall. I love the little button details right here and I'm super excited to get the top part on. I'm so close. <laughs> okay, I'll catch up with you guys when I'm all done. In order to figure out exactly where the button should go, I put the skirt on and tucked the bodice in, and pinned it exactly where I wanted it relative to the skirt. I then felt around for the buttons and marked where they were. Once I knew where the button should be, I just went and sewed them in. I guess I should like go out into the woods or something and model it. So there you have it, my experimental pinafore. I do love how it turned out though. And I'm very excited for my next sewing project. And I'm very aware that I have much to learn in the sewing world. Trust me. The inside of this is a hot mess. The outside looks good and that's all that matters. Right? Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in more, then please subscribe. If you're interested in non cha 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 if you're interested in non-sewing related projects, then you can check out how I made a miniature haunted house here. I hope you're having a wonderful October, and I'll see y'all next time.